Pika, Pika. <laughs> <sighs> but you probably do a better impression of Pikachu at this point. <laughs> Pika, Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's perfect. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Pokemon Shuffle and Pokemon Rumble World for the Nintendo 3DS. So, I first heard about Pokemon Shuffle through an email advert from Nintendo, which I subscribe to because there's a lot of good stuff in there most of the time. And I was like, it's free to play? Hmm, I wonder how free to play this free to play game actually is. Play it? It's actually free to play. <laughs> I really don't have to buy anything unless I really want to. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty free to play, and, you know, the limit of having five hearts, i.e. five chances at a game, makes it easy to pick up, play for a little while, and put down without losing yourself for two or three hours in a video game, which is what I'm prone to do when I play a video game. Both of us. Uh, especially since I usually just pick it up and play it while I'm waiting for my computer to do something like, oh, I don't know, rendering these podcasts. <laughs> I really like the fact that in this puzzle type, you can move the pieces around anywhere as long as there's a valid match. So it gives you more options, especially since the piece you're moving your other piece to gets moved into the spot that you were moving that piece to, if I said that in a way that makes sense. <laughs> um, your pieces switch, which is what happens in most puzzle games, but in most puzzle games you can only switch adjacent pieces. And this, you can switch any two pieces on the board, providing that at least one of those will end up making a match. And I love that fact because it makes it really easy to set up combos, even though I'm terrible at setting up combos in these particular puzzle games, even though I have so much fun playing them. Though at least I'm nowhere near as bad as my dad when he plays Tetris. Dad, the object of the game is to fill in the board. <laughs> Not fill up the board. Ugh. <sighs> I've never seen a Tetris screen look more like Swiss cheese than, I, than when I've seen him play. <laughs> and I really like the leveling system, which is nice, so your pieces can do more as they level up. And the Mega Evolutions is a really nice touch. I really like how you get special powers for pieces that can Mega Evolve when the Mega Evolution meter reaches its full. So that's really handy, brings in lots of extra strategy. Mm -hmm. And each Mega Evolution, at least the ones I've reached so far, the clearing pattern is different. So depending on what type of adversary you're going up against, you may even want to choose one that isn't a match type-wise because its mega evolution ability is more handy for the board grid. Like I remember this one particular level where the special ability of the Pokemon I was fighting against kept freezing pieces in a certain way and I realized that if I used this one mega evolution that cleared the boards in a vertical pattern, it would defeat that particular special move. Even though it was a type disadvantage, I used that Pokemon and its Mega Evolution to actually win that game. And Nintendo is giving a lot of online support to the game. There's all sorts of special events and extra Pokemon that are available for a limited time, which keeps players engaged and having to check in. Also the check-in system where you get 500 coins every day, which allows you to purchase more items using game money as opposed to real money. And just as you said, I really like the online features it has. And the street passing features are really nice as well. So when you street pass someone, you can get a heart or some other item, I believe. I think it depends on how many people you street pass, depending on what item you get based on that number. Also, how long it's been since you've street passed someone. If you haven't street passed someone in a while, they usually give you a little more of a boost. And it just... A really nice system so far. I haven't found it confusing at all. It's pretty easy to learn, pretty easy to pick up, and the puzzles just get harder and harder because I'm stuck at one part where I'm like, why can't I beat you? Because that happens. <laughs> and don't ask me the name of the Pokemon right now because there are a lot of the newer Pokemon and I haven't memorized their names. Probably won't. <laughs> yeah, my lexicon doesn't go much past the original 300 or so. I'll only remember a new Pokemon's name if I really like them. Like when Espeon and Umbreon came out, I'm like, I like those two Pokemon. Not just because they're Eevee Evolutions, but because they look damn cool. Yes. And going back on to the game being easy to pick up, if you're having trouble seeing a move, the game does prompt you. My only annoyance with that is that it prompts you much too quickly. It's like, I'm still analyzing the board. 
and that's not the move I would make. Mm -hmm. Especially a lot of times, probably because of the way they set up the algorithm, it usually points you to only a single move, not a combo. It almost never points to a combo, unless completely by accident. And another thing that I think can be confusing about the game is the Pokemon icons themselves. Usually in a puzzle game, the puzzle pieces are clearly delineated. You don't have pieces of similar colors. Oh, yeah. But, you know, a Pikachu and a Pichu look very similar on the game board, and hmm. it's not a match. Yeah, I was going to say, like, um, similar evolution Pokemon, or I should say evolution chains of Pokemon, like Lucario and the baby Lucario look almost exactly alike in the icon. So when you're trying to match those two up, I get confused a lot, and I oh, no, no, that, that didn't work because these are actually two different Pokemon. And that's where it pays to be a huge Pokemon fan when playing this. Though it's not required. Mm -hmm. I think it's also because they use just the heads for the game pieces, and some of the Pokemons have very similar head shapes in evolution as well. And now we move on to Pokemon Rumble World. I really like this game because I really enjoyed the first Rumble I played on my Wii way back in the day, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> if you can call a Wii old. But uh, though I really only played the demo and really enjoyed it, I just never had the funds to actually purchase the full copy. So it was nice to hear that, oh, you get a free version of the game? Oh, it's a freemium game. Well, let's see how free this freemium game is, just like the other one. I must say I found this one a little bit more confusing at first of like, okay, what's free? What's not? What does street passing do? What does spot passing do uh okay i know i can fight with these pokemon wait a minute this move isn't a rock type but i'm using a rock i don't get it okay that's a little bit clearer now because you actually had to explain some stuff to me like i wasn't using the spot pass because i was afraid it was going to use some of the in-game currency that you only get from special events so you have very little of it mm -hmm. but you can call free once a day and that gets you three spot passes and every five street pass or spot pass gets you a jewel and since you need a lot of jewels to buy balloons to access more areas street passing is very very important if you don't want to spend real world currency because this one seems to be more of the standard freemium model where they do a lot to kind of push you into spending real world money it's a lot less harsh than some of the games I've played where it's like, oh, you can't beat this level without buying this item. And this item happens to cost this much of this special currency in the game, which you can only get through leveling, which you can't do unless you pass this level. Or you could buy this thing, which will get you plenty of that in-game currency to actually pass this level. <laughs> ah, but I enjoyed the game. It's pretty much just take your toy Pokemon, go out, hit spam the A button, I believe it is, or... Y button, I can't remember which one's the attack at this point. <laughs> I just know I hit a button a lot and my Pokemon attacks. Yes, but if your Pokemon has two attacks, you can alternate between the two attacks because some Pokemon have an A move and a B move. Mm. The only downside for me is like, oh, I wish my Pokemon would level because I don't get an attachment to them. <laughs> yeah, there's really no attachment to the Pokemon because even if you happen to like a Pokemon, as soon as you get into a higher level area, that Pokemon's pretty much worthless to you. So you're constantly releasing your lower level Pokemon, including the Pikachu that the king gives you to start with. I thought the game would penalize me for doing that. <laughs> I like the ridiculous little stories of like all the attempts by the evil magician. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is quite persistent. Mm -hmm. hey, wait a minute, you were trying to take over the kingdom with pancakes? <laughs> uh, funny. But yeah, you also had to explain that balloon system to me and the whole stars, I think it is, or the special thing you get where you have a higher chance of getting something I can't remember what right now. It's when there's a rainbow in the background, you're more likely to get fever. When a balloon level has fever, extra stars get added to the field which increases the likelihood of getting rare Pokemon on those islands. Ah, okay, so that's how that works, because I was still confused even when you explained it to me before. <laughs> like, what? Uh, fever? Huh? What What does that do? And then you explained it to me, oh, okay, and then you explained it to me now, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So it's really the best is when you have fever in a location where you've already captured all the Pokemon because then you can get the rarer Pokemon at higher levels because anytime you've completely cleared a location by capturing all the Pokemon, when you go back there, the same Pokemon are available at a higher level. So you can go back to an earlier island, you know, say there was a Pokemon you really liked. Once you clear, you can go back and get them at a higher level. And as you can tell, he's played it more than I have. <laughs> Mainly because I would run out of moves in Shuffle and then switch over to Rumble, and by the time Rumble was done, I could go back to Shuffle. <laughs> so here are our final thoughts on these games. This is mostly where we're going to talk about which one we like better, and we both agree it's Shuffle. <laughs> Yes, as you have a leveling system, opportunity to, you know, form an attachment, you can progress without capturing the Pokemon, all you have to do is beat the level, so you can go and just level progress for a while and then you get stuck and you go back and you capture the Pokemon that you missed before, which are now easier because you're higher because you've leveled. Mm -hmm. Also, it's less of, pay us a little bit of money to make things a lot easier for you. It doesn't encourage that as much as it feels like it does in Pokemon Rumble. Mm-hmm, because I'm nowhere near enough diamonds to buy the next balloon. And the other thing that frustrated me with Rumble, I mean, beyond the, okay, you gotta catch them all, and you always have to one-up yourself because you just have to keep getting the newest and greatest, and it doesn't matter if you have 50 Rattatas, if they're all level 38, you have to get rid of them all because they're worthless, so there's no real attachment but none of my Pokemon ever seemed to have move types. I was using a Psychic Pokemon. I was using an Abra for fire and ice attacks. Because its attacks were fire punch and ice punch. <laughs> but did my Ponyta have a fire attack? No. Did my Latio? No. Did my Quilava? No. Did my Charmeleon? No. <laughs> Absolutely none of my fire Pokemon had fire attacks. And I never really had this problem. Most of my Pokemon had move types that were associated with the ones I caught. It was only like the first couple that mostly had normal type moves. Which is like, okay. I actually I think I actually recall that one of my normal type Pokemon actually had the move I needed. But as I got more Pokemon later, they usually matched up with their type. Their move type matched up with their physical type. Mm. I really should go back and play both of these some more, but right now I've been doing a lot of Splatoon. <laughs> Well, yeah, because it's Splatoon, and it's awesome, and my copy's not here yet. <laughs> Stupid online ordering. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Pokemon Shuffle and Pokemon Rumble World for the Nintendo 3DS. Thanks for listening. If you like Lex's art, you can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with these podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr. Really like this podcast? Leave a friendly comment below. Also, this is YouTube, so please subscribe. Really, really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He's currently open for commissions. All links in the description.